The DoorDash deactivation policy is bullshit. I'm going to start right there. You know, I am so furious with DoorDash right now. You know, I've given DoorDash every benefit of the doubt over the years. You know, when DoorDash first introduced uh, their DoorDash drive well, with the whole catering thing, and that was basically a scam, you know, I, I stuck with them. You know, I didn't instantly stop driving for them or anything. You know, when DoorDash uh, lowered the amount of pay, that they were given drivers there, you know, I still stuck with them because they were still offering, hey, at the time it was still higher than Uber Eats. I stuck with them. When DoorDash was accused of stealing people's tips, then I no longer recommended driving for DoorDash, but look, I still drove for them. When DoorDash started the on-time, that, that, uh, that on-time delivery stuff, which made driving for them like a living hell, which made driving for them, uh, you know, so stressful that, you know, that, 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 you know, you, you just be shaking at the end of your shift. Sometimes I still drove with them. I always give them the bit of a doubt. You know, I thought in the long term, enough people would complain, enough drivers would complain that eventually they would have to get rid of the on time, the on time delivery stuff. And they never did. And they've had this acceptance deal the entire time they've existed and that too i assumed hey listen uber got rid of it years ago because they had a class action lawsuit sooner or later doordash will eventually get rid of their deactivation policy regarding the acceptance rate because it is ridiculous to call drivers independent contractors but then to fire them, to deactivate them, if they don't accept a delivery. How can that be? That's impossible, okay? You cannot square that round peg. And, and, I, and I'm sorry, guys, it's going to be a little bit of a rant, but this is ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. And DoorDash sent me an email regarding their deactivation policy update about two weeks ago, and I didn't read it, you know, because I know it's just boilerplate stuff. Who cares, right? You know, but today I decided to take a look at the, the deactivation policy because I, you know, I, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I said, man, that, you know, they've been getting such bad press about the whole stealing tips. They've been getting such bad publicity. Maybe, you know, maybe, Maybe they changed the deactivation policy for the better. Who knows? I don't know. So there's a link in the email that goes to the deactivation policy. And I was expecting to see something different. And maybe I missed it. But the one thing that stood out to me was the one thing that has always been there. And that's regarding accepting and canceling orders. So I'm going to read to you what this says and why I think it's utterly ridiculous while I'm outraged and why it's time for drivers to get together and say, look, no more of this. All right, either you're going to change and keep up with Uber Eats or I'm done with you guys. So, so this is what this new policy, which is the same as the old policy says. The acceptance rate is the percent of times a dasher accepts the delivery that is offered to him or her through the app. Before a dasher must decide whether to accept the delivery opportunity, the dasher app provides a number of key facts about the order, including the name of the merchant, the destination, and the subtotal of the order. And by the way, I love that. It's better than what Uber Eats has done. Now, Uber Eats has started to catch up and do that regarding those guaranteed orders in some cities, in some cities. But DoorDash has been doing that from the beginning. So why would you ruin that by saying, well, li like, listen, but you got to accept the order. So we told you the information. Now you have to accept. Well, what's the point of telling us? It would be better not to tell us. 
and let us have the ability to accept the order or reject the order like Uber Eats does. Why would you give us that information, which is great, which I love. And then if we reject the order, we get punished for it. It doesn't make any sense how it affects you as your own boss. Now, listen, they start off the sentence like this as your own boss. You're your own boss. You don't have to accept an order. If you're an independent contractor, you are your own boss. You are not required to accept any kind of order. Okay. As your own boss, you have the right to decline any delivery opportunity. However, because dashers occasionally forget to log out of the application or into dash DoorDash may log you out of a dash. If you've felt failed to accept multiple delivery opportunities or remain on pause for an extended period of time. And that's the way they should handle it. That should be the end. So there shouldn't be anything else. So after that, that should be the end of it. And we should move on to a whole nother part of the deactivation policy. That should be the end. I'm okay with you doing that. If, if a driver isn't accepting a lot of orders, part of the punishment is, Hey, you log out. Now, what does the dasher do? All the dasher has to do is log back on. Good. That's it. So if you want to pun punish them, punish us in some sort of way. Okay. Part of the punishment is you log them out. They have to log back in. That's the entirety of the punishment. That's it. That's all you should be able to do. That's all you should want to do, by the way. Because taking the, the, this next step is ridiculous. But they do take it the next step. There is more. And it says, of course, you are always free to log out and pause a dash, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you need a break, you can pause the dash. You can log out. Now, here's the part that just infuriates me. DoorDash also notes that an extremely low acceptance rate may be an indicator of fraud or an effort to gain incentive programs offered through the DoorDash platform. How? How? How is not accepting something fraud or gaming the system? Even if it is gaming the system, then create a better system. If your incentive program is such that me not accepting an order is gaming the incentives, uh, the, the system, change the incentive program. But do not deactivate me or any of the other dashers. That is outrageous. To call us independent contractors, to not give us the benefit of workers, employees, like minimum wage, etc., like health benefits, etc., but then to deactivate us, uh, because of acceptance rate? It is ridiculous. And I scroll through here trying to give DoorDash the benefit of the doubt. Trying to trying to, 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 to go through. No, because I do this. Because I, I root for these companies to succeed. I want these companies to. I like that they exist. I like that people can just log on to DoorDash and start working and start making some money. In fact, my whole channel is about DoorDash and Postmates and Uber Eats. My whole channel wants them to succeed. But your success should not come by holding drivers down, by making their lives miserable. Because maybe some of these guys in the DoorDash CEO or maybe some of their guys who pay them, like, like the SoftBank company, all right, they don't get out there and drive. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like to have that on-time percentage and through no fault of your own not being able to complete an order at some arbitrary time that the app, that some algorithm sets up. They don't know what that's like. They don't know what it's like to have to, to, to you know, to, to, to get an order that tells you that you have to drive downtown in traffic for 20, 30 minutes. They don't know that that's not worth it for you. But if you reject it, you could be deactivated. They don't know. You know, they don't they, they, they don't know about all the people who'll give you like a one star because the restaurant messed up, not because you as a driver did anything wrong. 
or that if another driver cancels an order and you get an order, that you may be late delivering that food and they give you a once. They don't know this and they don't care. <clears throat> and I don't know if they care, but their entire deactivation policy is nonsense. Because their rating system is bullshit to begin with. It is in the entire thing is garbage. Garbage. It's not even garbage. And I apologize for swearing. But this is this is ridiculous. Now, I mean, of course, the part about canceling orders, the same with look, I agree. If a driver is out there canceling orders all the time, that's not good. You know, that means they could keep the food, etc. I mean, you know, it, it costs a restaurant money. Okay, I mean, I'm with you here. I'm not saying that drivers should never be fired. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the way that they go about doing it, does Uber Eats have an on-time delivery uh, requirement? No! Now, people always complain about Uber being some big bag boogeyman. <clears throat> they don't have some on-time delivery system. They don't have some acceptance rating. They used to. They stopped that years ago. They don't have some acceptance rating. Part of, you know, part of my entire strategy with Uber Eats, and I actually wrote made a video about this, was about how do you how, how to not to accept orders in order to make it more profitable for you in order to make it for, in order to make it worth it. So let me tell you a few things that DoorDash has that the other apps don't have, that Postmates don't have, that Uber Eats don't have. Why do you have to schedule? You know, Amazon Flex does this also. Why do you have to schedule? Why do they why do they want drivers to schedule and to micromanage how many drivers are out there? Uber, Uber Eats doesn't do it. Postmates doesn't do it because they want to make sure that they have good coverage everywhere. Okay, fine. But that, but that is a big, now if you're an independent contractor and there are multiple platform opportunities for you, would you rather pick Uber Eats or Postmates that doesn't have scheduling or would you rather pick Caviar? Or DoorDash, it does have scheduling. No, you pick Uber Eats. You pick Postmates. Why do you have zones? What is that about? So why, after I schedule, am I limited to one specific zone? And if all the other zones are taken by other drivers who have already pre-scheduled, why is it that I have to be stuck in a certain zone? What if that zone isn't hot today? So, well, you just don't make money today. So if the zone isn't hot, uh, too bad. You just don't make money today. That's okay. Why is it that they have on-time delivery? No, and my point is, Uber Eats doesn't have zones. Postmates doesn't have zones. Why does DoorDash? On-time delivery. Why are you arbitrarily coming up with a number of minutes that I have to complete a delivery when you don't know all the details? You don't know the details about traffic. You don't know the details about how long it's going to take the restaurant to complete the order. is nonsense. So if it's such a good idea, why doesn't your competitors do it? It's garbage. And the bit about acceptance being fraud. That you're somehow committing fraud because you're not accepting orders. That's your excuse. That you're worried about fraud? I mean, it's not a real excuse. It sounds like an excuse that some lawyer cooked up. Because they know that some driver somewhere or some group of drivers are going to sue DoorDash. And then the last thing I want to talk about is, why is it that DoorDash ratings are so always so much lower than Postmates and Uber Eats. You know what I had to do? And I, 
let me take a, and let me take a look. My driver rating is 4.7. You know what I had to do to climb up to 4.7? I had to start texting before, during, and after every every drive. I had to start giving little lollipops as presents. I had to start doing anything I could just to get it up to 4.7. But do you know that I have almost a perfect record with Uber Eats? I have a 4.97 and I have a 4.8 with Postmates. And I haven't had to do any of those things. Why is that? I don't know. I have no idea. But I know that every dasher who has left a comment on my channel has complained about their rating system. Not just the on-time rating system, I just mean the, you know, the basic rating system. The, you know, how was your dri- how was your driver experience? So whatever it is, it's flawed. So they need to start lowering the deactivation point, but they haven't. Honestly, I don't know how they're still in- I don't know how they get enough drivers to drive with them. They've stolen our tips. There's lawsuits that prove it. They have the on-time delivery thing that causes that has caused me to speed, has caused me to park illegally. It's ridiculous. Why would I want to do that? They, they have scheduling. They have zones. But of all those things, you know what? But, you know, I can handle the scheduling, the zones, the on-time delivery. I can handle it all. But the one that just makes me just want to throw something at the wall is the acceptance rate. Because you can't call me an independent contractor, but then also tell me when and when I cannot accept. If I don't accept enough orders, they're going to just deactivate me from the program. Lucky for me, DoorDash has competitors. Lucky for me, there is Uber Eats. So I went before, I I made a video comparing all three of what I consider the major ones. Of course, I know that Grubhub has always been a leader, but I know I've never driven from Grubhub, so I don't comment on Grubhub. I have driven for Caviar. I have driven for Amazon. But by the way, I'm going to get into the Amazon thing one day too. But of what I consider the three major players, I made a video in which I said, I no longer recommend DoorDash. I said, you know, you can drive for DoorDash. I don't recommend them. How can I recommend a company that steals tips? How can I recommend companies that has all the, all the things that I talked about here? I wrote them down. But now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm not going to drive for DoorDash. I'm not driving. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. What I'm saying is me, per- I'm not driving for them anymore. Not until they change their rating system. When they change the fact that acceptance rating can get you deactivated. When they change the fact that on-time delivery stuff can get you deactivated. You know, when they change all of that, when they... Actually, when they change their entire rate, you know what? So I'm never going to drive with them again because they're not going to do it. Not unless some lawsuit happens. Because DoorDash, when they first started off, they kind of pretended like they were the friendlier app. Like they were the one that's going to be in your neighborhood. You know, very friendly. You know, you had to go talk to someone. You had to do onboarding. And there was a human being that you could talk to. And that human being was so friendly. If you have any problems, any questions, come to me. They were the friendlier app. Whatever happened, they lost their soul. All right? They lost their connection to drivers. I'm done. I'm done. When you regain your soul, I'll be back. So sorry for the rant. If you've watched this all the way through. I know normally I'm a very soft-spoken you know, very positive person. I love my channel to be positive. 
but I'm done. I am no longer driving for DoorDash. I will never drive for them again unless their system changes. But for the rest of you, get out there, drive, thrive. And um, I'm so upset that I messed up my closer. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, have a good day, guys. Thank you.